Hi guys, this is Mike at Hudson Valley Hi-Fi. Today we're going to start off a video series um, I'd like to call Audio 101, or Audio for Beginners, in a way. Um, there's a lot of confusion when uh, maybe you're new to the hobby, or you know, you, you've maybe used to love you know your two-channel analog equipment and you know it's been a long time and you the terminology has changed or even if it hasn't maybe you just weren't privy to a lot of it back you know when you were into this but I thought it'd be a good idea to kind of give a basics create a basics uh, video series and today we're gonna start with amplification and the stages of amplification this is my favorite room in the whole store. This is our little demo space. Today we have a, looks like a Prima Luna little tube integrated amp. That's the Evo 100 and Blue Sound Streamer, uh, Luxman DAC CD player, and we're running this into a pair of Klipsch Forte 4s, um, which we just received a few weeks ago, and they've been, they've been burning in quite nicely. So, so this room, we do a lot of demoing in here, and we get a lot of uh, customers who want to sample equipment, and they're not quite sure what exactly they want. And what we do hear a lot is, uh, I need a receiver. That's what they'll tell me, I need a receiver. Uh, maybe they have an old pair of speakers, or you know, we're in the market for a new pair. Uh, but they need a receiver. <laughs> and you know, we try to explain, well, Today, receivers are not as big as they were uh, 40 years ago or 30 years ago. Um, receivers are a different thing. And, you know, then it goes on the misconception of, um, well, I don't need five speakers. And that's a whole nother, um, whole nother part of the audio hobby, audio video. Um, so it's a, it's a big misconception. Today, um, there's a lot of great analog two-channel stereo equipment being produced, and I'll argue it's some of the finest ever produced. Um, but it's not as popular mainstream, although, especially in the last, say, five or seven years, uh, there has been a big resurgence back to a two-channel setup. Um, this room right now is set up to demo uh, two different pairs of speakers. We can demo you know, one pair versus another. Um, up to three, maybe even more, and you know we can try different speakers and the sound of different speakers, and that's a whole nother video. <laughs> we'll get into speakers in a whole nother video. Today, the focus is gonna be on amplifiers, and this amp right here, this is an integrated amplifier. This is a Prima Luna Evo 100. It's a wonderful vacuum tube amplifier, um, and integrated amplifiers, they come in, uh, many shapes, sizes, and variations. Some have phono preamps built in, some do not. But why don't we start with the elusive receiver? What's a receiver? Let's, uh, let's cut and go to a receiver. Okay, well I had to look for one, but, <laughs> and this one's not whole. <laughs> this is a, uh, this is a Macintosh receiver. This is a, a Mac 4100. Um, this unit's actually being uh, currently restored um, in our service department. Uh, but this is a late 70s, early 80s, I believe. Um, you Mac guys can correct me in the comments. Um, but this unit is a receiver. This is what was very popular in the 1960s and 70s when FM and AM were your predominant uh, sources. You know, most listening was done over FM or AM, and uh, that's where these really shine. What is a receiver, quote unquote? What actually is it? A receiver is actually several components built into one. A receiver is a source, a tuner, an FM, an AM, like in this case here, here's your, here's your tuners right up in the front. Um, tuners are the source that's built into the unit. This one actually doesn't have its preamplifier right now, but the tuners feed into a preamplifier. And the preamplifier is sort of like the brain of the operation. It's the control. It's the uh, preamps we will get to shortly. Let's just start with a receiver and say a receiver is an entire signal path from source to speaker. A receiver is a tuner. It's a source. 
it is a preamplifier and an amplifier all in one. This one, ironically, the preamp is laying over here on the bench. Um, <laughs> but the preamplifier is where all your sources go to, and then your amplifier, which is in the back in this unit, that is the muscle, that is the power that a unit puts out. So a receiver is all in one. It is a source, a tuner, it is a preamp and an amp, and in this case, there's also a phono preamp. We'll get to those as well. But for now, let's just, let's put it in the back of our heads here that a receiver is an all-in-one. It is a tuner, it is a preamp, phono preamp, and amplifier all in one. You add speakers to this, and you can listen to FM and AM with no other equipment. You can hook a turntable to this, you can hook an auxiliary source to this. It's an all-in-one. Let's, let's keep this as your vintage receiver. There's also modern sort of receivers. Let's go check one out. That looks different, doesn't it? <laughs> modern receiver. Well, technically not a receiver, uh, but they like to call this an all-in-one. This is called Moon by Simodio's Ace. The Ace is a newer piece of equipment by Moon. It is basically a 240i integrated amplifier with not a tuner. This actually has a networking receiver built in or a networking streaming platform built into it. Uh, I don't know if this one's powered up. You can actually go into this unit and right there it says mind on the front. So companies like Moon have created software called Mind 2. Um, which connects to the internet. You see this has a little antenna on the back. You can also hook this up with a LAN cable. Um, but it connects to the internet. And using that network card, uh, you can stream you know, all kinds of audio. Uh, you can also connect this to software like Rune, which we will totally go to that in a different video. That's a, that's a good uh, while video there. Um, but this unit is also a preamplifier, an amplifier. This one also has a phono stage, like we have our Riga over here hooked to it. Um, so it does have a phono preamplifier. Um, this also has a DAC, a DAC, a digital analog converter uh, built into it. So when you look at the rear panel on this unit, which would be kind of hard to show you, but there are inputs for analog and there are inputs for digital down there. There's coaxial, there's USB, uh, there's optical Toslink. All of those connections are in here. And DAX we will talk about, again, in a complete other beginner's video. But for this purposes, let's just stick to what is in this. This is an all-in-one. It is a preamp, it is an amp, it is a source, because you have your network streaming. There's also inputs for phono, so there's a phono preamp. Essentially, this unit, you just add speakers, much like the Mac we were just looking at. Just add speakers to this, and you can play music without any other equipment. So, what on earth is an integrated amplifier, then? Let's go check it out. Well, here's one example of an integrated amplifier. This is the Luxman L505UX, and this is an integrated amplifier. This integrated amp is all solid state, class AB, and you can see on the input selector here, we have a balanced input, so that takes XLRs, then there's four line level inputs, there's a phono input, so there is a phono stage or a phono preamp built into this unit. It is a moving magnet, moving coil, so you can do both. Uh, you can hook speakers A, speakers B, so bass, treble, balance, volume control. So what is this unit? This unit is an integrated amplifier. This is a preamp and an amplifier all in one. It's in one box. There is no source in this unit. So essentially you can't just hook this to speakers and play. We need to hook a source to it. Now that source could be anything from, let's say the Luxman PD-171 turntable, or we can go over here and check out our, you know, Riga turntables. Um, any of those would work in this unit, but essentially these are Luxman integrated amplifiers. They are preamps with amplifiers and a phono stage. They do have a phono stage. Some integrated amps do not have a phono stage, such as the first Prima Luna we were looking at. That does not have one. That is just a preamp and an amplifier in one. So essentially an integrated amp is a receiver minus the sources. There's no tuners, there's no networking, there's nothing else. But 
you can have accessories. You can have phono stages. In this case, you actually have an equalizer, which is something Luxman's known for. Um, not many brands are doing that, but um, you know, we'll get back to that in a few. Let's look at some separates, preamps and amps. So just sticking here with Luxman, since we're on the same rack, um, this is the C700U uh, preamplifier, or Luxman likes to call it the control amplifier. What is a preamplifier? So a preamplifier is like the brain of your system. It's the controller of your system. The preamplifier is where all of your sources are attached, and this usually has some sort of an input selector. In this case, this does have a bass and treble control. Not all of them will. That is an EQ stage that you can bypass with that line straight to the left of it. Many preamplifiers will not even have equalizers anymore at all. Now this has a little screen just to show you what input you're in. Again, may not be required. If it did have an input selection switch, you may not even have the screen. And a volume control. That's preamplifier. This is an active preamplifier, not to be too confusing. There are passive preamplifiers uh, which do not have any gain. They are simply a volume control, an attenuator, and that's it. So think of the preamp as your brains. It's the tone forming area. It's where all of your inputs connect. It really controls the show. It's a vital component in your system. It's very important, it's very sensitive, and it's a very uh, vital piece to the whole system. Without cutting here, might as well go right to the power amp. So this is the, the M700. This is the M700U. Uh, again, Luxman, this is their power amplifier. This connects to your preamp. What does the amplifier do? It's the muscle. It's the power. This is the drive for your speakers. As much as the preamp is the brains, this is essentially the power. This is the muscle. So the power amplifier takes the signal from the preamplifier, sends it to the speakers, and amplifies it with the amount of gain that you require for your speakers. Its purpose is essentially gain. To do it cleanly, power amps though can affect the sound. They can absolutely change the sound slightly. Not quite as much I feel as a preamp can, but a power amp can change it. So this would be considered a separate system. This is separate components. What does lack in this preamp, this is what's called a line stage. It is a straight line inputs. There is no phono stage built into here. You cannot connect your turntable directly to this preamp. So that would require a phono preamp. That's something we'll cover right now. So what's a phono preamp? And why do I need a phono preamp? Well, this is the little 110 LP from Moon by Some Audio. And this is a really compact phono preamp. You see, it's pretty, pretty small. Uh, it has switches on the bottom here. And these switches are all of your loading settings. So depending on the cartridge on your turntable, you can choose your impedance, you can choose your capacitance, and you can set your gain level for the cartridge. On the rear, it's pretty simple. <laughs> Input is going to be from your turntable. Output goes to your preamplifier, and that's it. So what does this do? Why do I need this? What is the purpose of a phono preamplifier? Well, your cartridge on your turntable is not a active component. It's not a gain creating component, and it's not a line level component. The cartridge on your turntable is only putting out signal in the millivolts of output power. So you need to amplify that to what's called line level. Line level can be anywhere from a volt to a volt and a half, depending on you know, the component, but the idea is that that's the signal, that's the amount of signal the preamp wants to see. The preamp wants about a volt or so. It doesn't want to see four millivolts, you know, like a moving magnet cartridge typically will put out. Four to six, four to seven, somewhere around there. It doesn't want to see 0. 0.5, you know, up to maybe two, that some of the moving coil cartridges out there create. Um, what they're doing is creating a signal, much like a guitar string. When you hit a guitar string on an electric guitar, it passes over um, a pickup, and that creates magnetism, which translates to a signal. That's exactly what's happening in a phono cartridge. What this unit is doing is it's taking that signal, it's taking that very low level signal, and it's cranking it up to line level. And 
moving magnet cartridges, you're typically going to use about 40 decibels of gain. Moving coil cartridges can be anywhere from 54 to 66. Um, some low output moving magnets, you may want to go up to 50. There, there could be all kinds of settings on yours. This is just what's on the moon, but there can be many different settings. Sometimes, like we saw on that Luxman in the other room, uh, it could just be moving magnet, moving coil, which would be preset. You wouldn't have all these adjustments. It would be a built-in system. So this, this component can be built into your integrated amp. It can be built into your receiver. It more than likely wouldn't be this sophisticated. This is a little more dialing in, you know, the settings of your cartridge. Um, but nonetheless, this is a really vital component. What this is doing is taking that low signal, that very low gain signal coming off of the cartridge, and bringing it up to the level that the preamplifier wants to see. Uh, and then when you go between, say, your CD player or your DAC and your turntable, um, it's going to be about the same level of gain that are going into the preamp. If you didn't use this component, what would end up happening is you'd have to really crank up your, your preamplifier uh, and make the amp do way more work. Um, it's not going to sound all that great either. The other part that the Phono preamp does, which is not really known as much, is there's something called a RIA curve in here. Now, RIA was set up years and years ago. This was, you know, the recording industry created it. It's an, it's an equalization curve that every album on the planet basically uses. And RIA has been around forever. If you have albums from the 60s, 70s, it doesn't matter. They all use this RIA equalization. And a, you know, just to simplify it here, the phono preamplifier sort of decodes that or it uses that equalization um, to feed it into that line level input on your preamp. So it is very important. If you try to run your turntable directly into your preamp, it, it's not going to really work. <laughs> it's just not. Um, likewise, this is very important, and we state this numerous times to you know newcomers to the hobby. Um, never, ever, ever, ever put anything into the phono input on your integrated amp receiver. If your integrated amp or receiver, or, or preamp for that matter, if they have an input that's labeled phono, you never want to put anything into there but a turntable, but a cartridge, that's it. Um, putting something like a CD player or a cell phone or a tablet or anything that's line level into something that's looking for a signal in millivolts uh, is going to overdrive that input tremendously uh, and usually burn up components you know, in the signal path. So very important. Phono preamps, we can probably have a whole other video on these guys. Um, they come in many shapes, many sizes, moving magnet, moving coil. This device does both. It's just one example. There are hundreds and hundreds of phono stages out there. Um, this one's a good value, but we won't get into that right now. Let's. Why don't we move on to, hmm, how about DACs? Okay, so what's a DAC? <laughs> why do I need a DAC? DAC, Digital Analog Converter. We can, again, go into this for a probably another half an hour video, but let me just give you the overview so you get it. In case you haven't recognized, that's a CD player on the bottom. This is the Luxman DO3X. It is a very nice CD player. It's also a very nice DAC, Digital Analog Converter. It's 2021 currently, and most hobbyists in audio, if you're into digital audio, you're probably streaming. Um, streaming has become very dominant. It's not compressed MP3 anymore. Um, this is a blue sound node, uh, and this is one of our very popular streamers in the store. That device is connected to the internet, and it's pulling files from, say, services like Kobuz or Tidal, um, Spotify, Amazon, uh, you know, all these different source providers of uh, digital music. And it's taking those files and it has to convert them from their digital form, their ones and zeros, it has to turn them into an analog wave because your integrated amp does not want to see ones and zeros. It wants to see nice waveforms, the music. It wants to see analog. So how do you turn the ones and zeros into analog? You use a digital analog converter, a DAC. Guys will tell me, I, well, I don't understand. 
I've never had to have a DAC or a DAC. Well, you have all these years. It's called your CD player, which your CD player is a DAC. Your CD player takes a physical disc containing ones and zeros and converts it into an analog wave. The ones and zeros come off the disc over here in the transport. The transport is the laser that reads the disc and takes that data off the disc and feeds it over into the other side there, which is the DAC. The DAC takes those ones and zeros and makes it into a nice analog wave to then feed that into one of the line level inputs on, you guessed it, your integrated amplifier. So what is a DAC now? It was in my CD player, but why do I have to have one separately? Well, today your transport is streaming. Your transport typically is either files you've downloaded or files that you're taking from the internet to play them. So something like the blue sound up here is a streamer slash DAC. This is very similar to a CD player in that it has a transport, which is the streamer, which the streamer takes the music from the internet, the ones and zeros, downloads them from the web, and sends them over to a built-in DAC. Inside that blue sound node is a DAC. It's a Burr Brown design chipset with a DAC. DACs come in so many varieties. There are all types of them out there. We can spend all day talking about them, but for the, our purposes here today, just understand what a DAC does. The DAC takes the data, the digital data, turns it into analog, and sends it to your amplifier. Done. A line level input, and that's it. Line level input, which would be an RCA, maybe an XLR, it's an analog cable. It's not a digital cable. Not to complex things too much here, but what we're doing currently here is we're taking data from our blue sound, and instead of sending it out in analog, we actually have a digital coaxial cable, which is going into the DAC on our Luxman. And that is why, if you look over here, we are getting a 24-bit 96K signal from the Blue Sound unit. Essentially, what we are getting there is twice the resolution, a little more than twice the resolution of a CD. And this is streaming from the internet. And that is being fed from then the Luxman DAC up into our integrated amplifier. DACs can be standalone. DACs can be in a CD player. DACs can be in a streamer. DACs can be built into a receiver like we saw back in that Moon Ace. The Moon Ace has a DAC built into it. Some amps do, some integrated amps do, some receivers do. It really depends on the design. It really does. If you're looking instead up here at our Prima Luna, this doesn't have anything built into it. This is purely a preamp and an amp in an integrated version. So we do have a volume control we do have four line level inputs. There is no phono stage built into this amp. There is no DAC built into this amp. It is a purely a preamp and an amp. That's it. What we are doing here is we're feeding signal from our DAC into our integrated amplifier. Likewise, we could also have a phono preamplifier with a turntable feeding an analog source into our integrated amplifier. So the integrated amp does not have a source built in. It needs sources hooked up to it, but it is the preamp and the amp built into one chassis. That is exactly what an integrated amplifier is. I think we're about ready to wrap things up. Okay, so we're back at the nice listening chair, and I really want to turn my music back on, but I know YouTube would, oh, they would criminalize us for doing so. But in any case, if this is helpful to you, and I really hope it is, I mean, if you stuck around for 25 minutes so far, please give us a thumbs up. Please subscribe to our channel. We'd love to keep making this for you. If this was helpful, let us know in the comments below. If you have questions, ask them in the comments below. We'll be happy to help. Um, give us a call anytime. We, you can reach us at the store. You can call us or text us. 845-219-1730. If you want to reach me personally, it's Mike, M-I-K-E, at HudsonValleyHiFi.com. You can always check out our website at HudsonValleyHiFi.com.